What is up, everybody? Welcome to Raw is Law. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Raw is Law. I am your host, Beaten Cheeks, aka Berto. Today, we have a special guest who is right now just appearing right on time. As you can tell, he has some crying ass babies right now. I hope you have some headphones, Mr. Gibson. How are you, sir? I am well. As you can see, I'm wearing my proud boy hat today. You know what? I wish I had your shirt because once I get them shirts, I am gonna be proud. I'm gonna be proudly wearing that shit. Amen to that, brother. Please do. Oh man, how you doing today? How's it? How's it in New York right now, sir? I'm doing well. Busy. It's cold everywhere. Yeah. You hear my yeah. grandson? My grandson acting up. <laughs> I hear that, man. You better, you know, <laughs> shut him up. <laughs> you know, that's hard for the granddaddy to do. I know, man. I don't I don't know yet. I, I want how many uh how many grandkids you have? Four. And how many kids do you have? Five. Damn. So someone's missing some um some kids, huh? Right, exactly. How old how old your uh how old are your kids? Oh, they grown. All my kids grown. They in their twenties and thirties. Oh, okay. So around my age. All right. Yeah, cool. yeah, they're twenties and thirties. Oh 30. man, that's so what's up. Anyways, it's an honor to have you here. Uh, so we are gonna dive in. Just you know, we're gonna get straight to it. Uh, just give us a little bit of background of your information. Like, where where did you grow up? Did you grow up in like a you know nuclear family dynamic? Uh, how did you uh you know did you go to college, military? Give us a little lowdown on that. Okay, yeah, my name is Derek Gibson, and uh, I'm a born New Yorker. Uh, my parents moved to the South. I was raised in the South around Atlanta, Georgia area, and I moved back to New York after it's fear of men in the South, see what the South was all about. And uh, I grew up, I went to college, got my degree in automotive technology. I'm also a pilot. And I went back to college, got me a degree in criminal justice. And dibble and dab in the police department and uh, CCRB uh, in New York State. Ran for New York. Hey, yeah, uh, your your voice, your uh, your you got muted there. Did you mute something? Hey, they, 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 hey, Derek, Derek, I can't hear you. Get yeah, a phone started. Oh, oh, okay, that's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, but anyways, yeah, yeah. Last time, last time I, last thing I heard before your phone got uh, crazy is uh, you went, you went, you lived in ATL, you went to college, got your degree in uh, automo automotive. Uh, okay. After that, technology, you know. yeah, degree in automotive technology. Later, I went okay. back to school and got a degree in uh, criminal justice, dibbling that with law enforcement, and did a few things uh, in that. I decided to run for New York State Governor. Uh, dipped out in it that uh, I'm a business owner on a uh, transmission repair shop. And we also, when I was married, well, I was like, I'm still married, I'm getting divorced. Uh, we had those uh, homes for the slow people. So, a lot, a lot going on. Right, right, now, I'm just a, right now, I'm just a Trump supporter. Good old MAGA Trump supporter, man. MAGA. We're... It's, free, it's free, you MAGA. Extreme MAGA. Yeah, man. I, right. I had to jump on the board a few. Damn. Yeah, we're going to be talking about all that real soon. Don't you worry, man. So uh, I want to know, like, when, when it comes to politics, right? I'm, I'm kind of like fresh new to this as of just a few years ago. Uh, and you and I touched about this a little bit in regards to, you know, running for office. I don't think I can personally run for office because I have a lot of red in my ledger. Uh, I don't I don't know how, how you could run for office in my position. I personally never want to be running for office, but I do want to give my money to the people that I feel our policies are right with the good, uh, strong understanding from the backgrounds that I see that they have helped society and also their communities out. Right. That's what I'm all for. So like, you know, me supporting you, you know, to move forward with, you know, to make things better. That's good support that I can, you know, show to people like you. Right. And, okay. So, yeah, and that's why I also I was trying to look really, really hard all over the Internet for interviews and stuff. It seems like you have never been on any podcast or anything. I've been on a podcast. I've been on, I've been on Newsmax. I've been on uh, 
broadcast around the world, so I don't know why you couldn't find it. You well, I saw some. It. I saw. I saw you've been interviewed uh, in like you know some big stations, but like and like right. I'm talking about like just recently. That's what I mean. Like oh yeah, recently I fell back after the governorship run. I kind of fell back. I was just kind of fed up with how things was going, and I just fell back, laid back, and took care of the business side of me, which I've been all my life running my business and uh, establishing things for. Your phone's ringing. Man, they gonna blow it up, man. <laughs> man, you gotta keep your hose in check, man. You gotta tell them. <laughs> I need to put it on do not disturb. <laughs> yeah, no shit. But uh, anyways, you were saying about the business stuff? Yeah, I went back to my business side, side to reestablish businesses for for my grandchildren so they won't struggle when they come. I hear a lot of people say, well, you know, Trump dad gave him a million dollars. I'm like, yeah, that's a good thing. That, uh, any man should uh, lay down an easy path for their children and their grandchildren. So that was a good thing. And I'm doing the same thing for my grandchildren. So uh, when they do come up about 20 years old, they'll be millionaires at the age of 20. And I'm going to teach them, as long as I'm on the earth, the right way, how to do it, financial literacy, and, you know, just move them about uh, the best I can. That's a beautiful thing. And uh, that is that is what I'm trying to do as well. I'm trying to build up my business right now as well. This is not, you know, what you see right here is not my business. I'm more of an entertainer and also getting to know people better. And I want to take in that knowledge because everyone I always have on my podcast is basically people that are smarter than me uh, and all aspects of the, you know, that you can, can, you know, think of. I don't care if you're uh, liberal, Democrat, Republican, right, conservative. I can always right. learn also from the liberals. I'm not saying I'm going to take their ideology. That's for damn sure. Right. I was part of the I was part of the left, you know, for a long ass time. Uh, we'll, we'll, but we're going to talk about that uh, a little later. We have no. I mean, I have, I'm so I'm I'm excited to have you on here because you're like the most funniest, outgoing, no fucks given type. And I'm like, this guy is a fucking running for office type. Man, this this is my guy right here. I I want to do whatever I can to get this guy, you know, blowing up as much as I can because I recently built up a like a huge like audience just recently just the past few months that i'm like damn these people enjoy my shit talking on these you know these libs and shit and also you know i'm kind of a nerd too so i like to game a little bit and shit talk to these fucking incels and shit that don't touch grass so that's where you know that's where my main thing is that i got a lot of you know uh eyes on me right but the biggest right. thing is that i want to do is help men's right activism uh, helping veterans because I'm a fellow veteran myself and I know what a lot of veterans have to go through. You know, I know it's difficult for them to get jobs, you know, because especially when it, when they're not in military, such as like that are career focused after the military, such as like the Navy and Air Force and people like in the, the Army and Marines, they're grunts majority of the time. I'm not saying all of them, but like majority of them are basically grunts and they're they, they're lost outside when they get out, right? They're, they're, Cause they all they know is how to like turn wrenches and that shit, but right. they don't know how to put, apply those skills or even try and go to like a trade school or even college. Me, I'm very much against college. And I like to consider myself living proof that as a high school dropout with a, you know, barely passing GED that we're in America, baby. I, if I can do it as an immigrant, you know, that migrated here when I was six, there's no excuses for people that are already born here. No matter what your skin color is, to just look at yourself in the mirror and say, I can fucking do something. The only problem is no one takes accountability for their own actions to move forward with life and help out society. Right. So you, on the other hand, you took it by, you know, by the horn and you went to college, you went and, you know, did something that, you know, is going to help society out. You're making moves. You're, 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 you built a legacy where you have grandkids. That's a beautiful thing. I, I you know, sorry about the divorce. That's something I don't ever one experience, by the way. I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not. I don't want. I don't even want to get married. <laughs> I'm, I don't even want to get married, though. That's the thing. You know, I, I, marriage is is good if it's done right and both sides do the right thing. It's good, but when it's one sided, it's just it, it's not going to work. It's a total disaster. So the last marriage I had was a total disaster. I mean, it turned out to be nice from the beginning. Like I said, I prayed for a wife. And uh, I, like when you pray, Satan hears your prayers too. So I guess he wrapped this one up real good and make it look, make it look 
but when the rabbit came off, boy, it was ugly. <laughs> that is funny as shit, dude. So, what's that? I say, always pray and ask for the sermon. If not, the, the Satan will send you, uh, he hear your prayers too, so he'll send you somebody to tear you down. <laughs> crazy man so i i do want to uh i want to i want to start hitting on these uh bullets uh that i wrote down so uh, whenever you uh do you graduate out of atlanta like georgia tech university of georgia or where no uh i graduated at uh technical college in america georgia oh okay i used to live in atlanta too and that's where yeah. i met uh jimmy carter menashe and begging and Elwan sadat i was uh doing pilot lessons and i met them on the outskirts so it was a great on that really steered me towards politics. Damn, that's badass, man. Good shit. So, really steered me towards politics when I met uh, those people. Were you were you ever part of like the Black Panther movement or anybody like the, the leftists, you know, like, you know, feminized, you know, bullshit going on or like tell me your story how you got heavily heavily involved like the the way you are now to you know, what made you be that way, the way you are now? And, like, how did it progress uh, for you to become, you know, kind of like the most talked about guy, you know, for quite a long time now? But, uh, never, you know. I, I never a leftist, but I did look at policy and not the name of the party. And I voted for the person I thought would be the best for the uh, leadership position in the United States of America. I voted for Reagan because uh, he had good policies. He had good talk. He put forth those talks that were good. I voted for Bill, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton had a great economy, even though he had other things going on, but he had a great economy going on likewise. Uh, I, look, I wasn't old enough to vote for Richard Nixon, but I did look at a lot of things that was going on during that time as a kid, and I, I really liked that guy, Richard Nixon. He had a great economy going on, so... so. To say I worked on George Bush II, uh business advisory board when he was president. And I've been around the block a couple of times, but I never registered as a Democrat. Uh, I was grew up in a conservative Christian home, and I kept those values even when I went out to college. My mom used to beat in my head all the time. Uh, don't be an educated fool. Even though you go to college, use common sense. Don't be an educated fool. And this is what I see out there today is educated fools. They don't apply any common sense to that knowledge that they picked up in college. I'm not against college, but I'm against some of the uh, courses that are being taught that are worthless just to take the, the people money. And then when you get through, you're in debt and you can't even get a job. So I've been out there for a while. I've never been afraid. I hunt, I fish, I do everything that uh, you expect for a man to do to provide and take care of his family. And that's the type of guy I am. Hell yeah, man. Respect to that shit. I had to learn how to do all that shit after I became a boy at like the ripe age of fucking 29. <laughs> so a little, little backstory about me. I was raised in a single mother home, very poor. Um, so, and then I didn't, you know, I hated school. So I dropped out, joined the military, did my thing for seven years. And then uh, I was still like a beta bitch, very liberal atheist. My mom's Catholic. You know, at the time she hated that, you know, I was an atheist. I used to debate, you know, with Christians on what's real and what's not. Next thing you know, I've been, I've been, uh, when I started making money a little bit around 2017, 18 is when I kind of like, you know, started, you know, realizing why am I believing in these falsehood beliefs, right? Why right. was I, why, why is, why was I such a bit of a degenerate, you know? Well, I wasn't, I was trying to be a degenerate. I was just so poor and ugly. I might know it's still kind of Jewy like, but, um, but, uh, yeah, you know, and then not only that, I was blaming other people for my problems. You know, I was always saying, oh, that, cause I got, I've been arrested multiple times. Oh yeah. Me to, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, but the thing is I used to blame the officers because they're white. They fucking, you know, they're racist, you know, and they're fucking assholes. They don't like my kind, you know, fuck these guys. Right. 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 And then. That you know, and I grew up with a very entitled mentality because my mom, you know, I was living off her for a while, even when I was in the military a little bit, right? Right. And so I didn't not I didn't have a you know father figure growing up with. You know how I learned how to be or learn how to be a man was through my best friends that were in the military that grew up in you know good nuclear family dynamics, right? Right. Right. And and then 
I learned that from them. And not only that, but by calling my shit out, like, Berto, you ain't shit. You're not doing anything. <laughs> like, you got to have people like that give you constructive criticism to make you grow. Like, you can't be around brokies. You can't be around people that keep you down. That's the friends that I had. And now look at them. They have families. They have successful businesses. They're doing everything right, you know? Yes. The great. problem is, the problem is, though, with this day and age, everyone that lacks that are going on the internet looking for the wrong people to listen to. They're, they don't have any real masculine figures in their life close to them, so they think they can seek it out by watching uh, stupid shit on YouTube or whatever content, and they're not learning a damn thing about how to help society out. Like, for example, I'm a cybersecurity uh, subject matter expert. I put guys in jail, pedophiles, fucking rapist shit, like, put some pretty bad people out, you know? People that accuse people of, like, you know, shit like that. That's what right. I do in the technology world, and I'm pretty damn proud of that. That's one. And so, but I had to like work my ass off to be able to be in a position where I'm at now to be like, well, I'm doing pretty well. All I need is a woman. Now that comes to be a big issue. And you spoke about this as well in your spaces, which I've been in a few times. It's all about the fatherless homes that these women are growing up in. And then they become feminists and it becomes impossible to date because they have this goddamn boss ass bitch mentality. And it, it, they're like un, undateable. And, be, and then because of that mentality from the single mother homes, they want to have careers over babies and families. And guess what? You said this in your uh, last space that I was in. You're like, our population is a decline and it's even worse in the black communities. Like we want to help out the communities. Right. So stop thinking like that, you know? And then, so, okay, you don't have a father and uh, he's a deadbeat. All right. Well, teaching them these kids, that you know, staying in the hood is the only thing you have going for in your life is not the correct way. That's what the Democrats right. like to push because that's a mind control, you know, thing of you don't amount to shit, but you're gonna stay here for the rest of your life. You're gonna sling drugs and fucking, you know, get other people pregnant and be a deadbeat. And there's nothing in America that you can do except for ask for their governmental help, food stamps, you know, uh disability, whatever bullshit, right? That's that's the same old story that these, you know, these libs are doing. But right. we're in America. When whenever I had my black friends get leave that mentality, they become more successful than my white friends. You know, and it's not because right. of DEI; it's because they had to prove their worth that anyone can do it. And then That's we have right. the DEI bullshit, where they're hiring people like me, you, that are very underqualified just to meet the fucking you know quota, just so right. investors right. keep investing in a fucking shitty bottom line. Right? Of right. said companies. That's still not a good way. The best way to move forward, in my opinion, is to take that money and educate people in those bad neighborhoods and bad communities and educate them that they can do something and they can leave out there, right? What is your take on whole DEI and also the whole, you know, community out outreach within, you know, the black communities and like Latino communities? Well, I spoke out against D DEI when it first came out. I was like, it's that's agenda is coming uh, directly from Satan, and it's coming to confuse the people, the community. So keep us divided. If there's something that's corrupt to keep us uh, divided, and this is what uh, the higher ups need to have total control over the people. They want chaos. They want division, and then they can usher in their new world order. This is what's going on. D e i d e i d i e or whatever the hell you want to call that crap. Man, it's, yeah. it's wasteful, it's pathetic, it's in, it, um, uh, infiltrated the military, all our institutions, and it just, it's ridiculous. A lot of, it's a lot of businesses don't learn from it, and they're getting rid of it. They're getting rid of the people that they hired to, you know, bring it in and enforce because their eyes are open and they see it's absolutely nothing that needs to be going on in our society. What needs to be going on in our society is that we need prayer back in school, things like that. If you go in the school now, you cannot go in with a Bible, but you can go in with a drag queen, queen uh, king, or whatever you want to call them, and read story hours. So society has collapsed uh, completely. We have got to get back to uh, the godly America that we used to be. If not, we're going to be totally lost. Yeah, I couldn't be a disagreement. And they, they, they've been pushing this since the early, uh, since the 30s, 40s, and it's only been progressively getting worse. 
Right. Um, and then it's only the powers that be because they want to be bring a socialist uh, construct, right, uh, to uh, to America. that have been implemented for a very long time, and it's only gotten stronger with the power and money from the Soros Foundation, from you know, uh, you know, WF, BlackRock, and BlackRock right, right. literally put, right. dipping their you know their pinky in every single company that they can, including real estate. So even that, you know, it's becoming extremely difficult. And I just came to realization the other day. I just interviewed another guy. He was telling me how BlackRock is so deep in everything that they have like they, they're just so intricately like connected to like the smallest even things that even if you, you know, try and like, you know, commit to something like, for example, like a retirement fund, right, that you don't even realize they're, that, you know, they're investing in. They're still taking money out of you to make things worse for the uh, right. Society. I don't mean to interrupt, but you know, BlackRock is funded by you, me, all the taxpayer investors. That's exactly who funding them, and and they taking full advantage. They using our money to crap on us. Oh yeah, they're yeah they're making us fucking look bad. Uh, they're they're like the worst. They're like you said, they're fucking they're the pure heart evil. You know. Like we we can see that in the population decline going on, not just in America, but just the world. Right. There's a right. huge population decline right now. And it's all for this push on DEI. What is a push? Transgenderism. What does that do? Right. It fucking cuts your dick off. OK, right. guess what? When you cut your dick off, you can't reproduce. OK. And they think that's OK. And then guess what? People off themselves after the fact, you know, after a few years experiencing Oh shit! That was actually like right. legit mental illness. Right. Commit suicide, right? Exactly. Right. So they, 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 you know, and then you have, you know, you know, they're pushing, you know, LGB. Uh, I'm not even including the T's right now because we just kind of just discussed that. But the LGB, like I have, you know, gay friends, you know, they're happy as shit, you know, whatever. There's not a knock on them. The knock is more on the idea to think that that's still okay, which is not because when you have gay couples. <laughs> You can't you can't reproduce. Two right, men can't, right. you know, men can't fucking, you know, get pregnant. Guy on, or girl on girl can't. It has to be Adam and you know, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Correct. So, and then but the problem is like you what we were talking about with DEI, it's not just being implemented in the corporate America, but it's also being pushed like it's okay to our children in like elementary schools. How that is just fucking awful. So with this follow-up statement that I want to ask is you are going to be running for governor again, correct? Can you hear me? Did you? Did I lose you? Fuck, I hope not. Shit. I fucking lost him. Give me a second, everybody. God damn it. Did not expect that loss. How's everyone doing that's watching? Audio good, everything good, everybody. Fuck, I'm so sorry. He dropped. He'll get. He'll get back on. He knows how. Damn. Oh yeah, man. For sure. Don't ask, don't tell. That was in like 2010 or some shit. Yeah, man. That was bullshit. Um, yeah, the military's gone woke. We are in uh we're in a decline in the the military recruitment right now. They're they, I mean, they're accepting fat fucks right now. They're they're just so fucking desperate right now in the military that they'll just accept anybody. They don't even give a fuck if you're a tranny or not. I think they're, they're even thinking about, uh, oh, there he is. What's up, sir? Can you hear me? For some reason, the connection lost, and I had to go out and come back in. Oh, no, you're good, sir. I could hear you, but I couldn't. I just my, I dropped off up there. Do you have better lighting? We want to see that. You know, we want to see your glowing face, you know? Right, right. I will. I got I got to make a move. So hold on. Yeah, yeah. Well, go yeah, ahead. Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead on speak. So I got my yeah, yeah. So, so I, got to I was just talking about like how the military has uh has gone uh down downward spiral. 
uh, with the woke agenda being, you know, right. into it. Uh, we're, I'm, I'm like, you know, they're, they're lacking in recruitment right now. They are like, I, when I was in the military, when I got out in 2012, it was already pussified. Like I can't even like, I, I, I didn't even scream at some guy, you know, I just told him, Hey, take the fucking trash out. He went and fucking cried at some little, you know, one of my fucking superiors saying I yelled at him. It's, it's, I'm like, man, what a bunch of bitches. And I'm in the fucking air force. Right. Like we already, okay. we already look bad enough looking like bitches as it is. But, oh, my God, Derek, man, I, I tell you what, the military is a fucking joke now. When people Damn. ask me if they want to join the military, I'm like, hell no. Dude, <laughs> no, I do not recommend that at all anymore. Fuck that. I don't blame Because, you. like, the only, like, I, I don't recommend any women to ever join the military or, you know, any government work, like, firefighting right. or even a cop. Like, leave, leave that to the men, right? Sure. Unless you want to be in HR, the most, like, shittiest fucking like most undependable job ever um or nursing you know we need nurses in the military but that's not even me sounding like a misogynist that's just me being real so we can protect the women right let us handle all the all the hardships and right. all the you know worst shit that you know anyone can handle so correct it's just it's just you know it's just, it just blows my mind how, you know but the problem is with the whole feminist agenda feminist ag agenda that you know they're implementing this fourth wave feminism is been complete dog shit and you can see it in this egalitarian society that you and I are currently living in. Right, right. That's correct. You, you like you look at look at like I mean we we are all pussies now. Like look at uh Canada. They're like the the worst of the worst. Like Justin Trudeau can't doesn't even have a fucking spine to you know identify a woman for fuck's sake. I mean <laughs> This is so fucking bad, man. Like, and then guess what? They're but pushing that, that same shit over in your state. Right. It's pathetic, man. But it, 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 that's what you get when you got a bunch of liberals and Democrats running your cities. Uh, then you got so much. I don't necessarily think they're getting elected. I think there's so much cheating in the election that uh, they have been placed in these positions. So it's really a sad thing. And it, it's just, I don't, I just, I just lose words, man, when talking about them because it's crazy. And they're pushing all this lame ignorance out from the Democratic Party, manipulating the people, brainwashing them, and it just goes on and on from there. Yeah. So before you got cut off, um, I want to know: Are you are you going to be running for governor again? Uh, now I'm running. I'm going to run for Senate. Senate. What's yeah, the difference? I, like, what's the difference between being a mayor, Senate, and governor? Well, a senator, you the governor is the actually the president of the state you know you run that particular state the congress people are just representative of the state that represent you in washington dc senators the same thing so that's the difference okay and all right so but if you're a senator you'll be more into you'll be representing new york say out of like dc i guess right Right. There you go. That's correct. Even though I have an office uh, in New York because I'd be representing that particular district, but my uh, main office would be in D.C. OK, OK. So what so who are you like? So since you're going to be running for Senate, wouldn't you be going against AOC? No, not AOC. AOC is a Congress person. I'd be going against Christian Gilbert. Dude, that. Oh, man. Congress have you. Huh? Two year turn. Senate is a six year seat. Oh, okay. How is she still in office? I mean, I'm. Oh, I don't even want to ask. Well, like that like thing. I spoke, all the fraud in the election and everything, they being plays there, and they become part of the clique, and basically they just there until they retire. Mostly, the whole system oh, is a set up and it's corrupt as hell. Yeah, that does fucking suck, man. Like. Right. It, like the problem is with this whole corruption, there's so much money involved, and the the only way to fight it is you know with fire, right? Right. Um, that, I feel like that's the only way, and because of that, there's the only problem is you have to give it you have to give it to the libs and these Democrats. They fight fucking dirty. They're fucking doing it right when they do it dirty. The Republicans oh, yeah. don't have oh, any yeah. time to do it. Right, right. That's why so much have look at the FBI. How they keep funding the FBI? The FBI is going out to drop everything 
uh, going after January 6th, which was merely a protest. Yeah. So the summer of 2020 summer of so-called love, uh, you see what they did, absolute number. They put the uh, people January 6th on domestic terrorist list, so on and so forth. I mean, you can see the hypocrites uh, directly in our government and our Republicans don't have the spines to do nothing about it. They continue to fund the corrupt FBI. Uh, the other people- uh, the- I lost you there at the, the end. Corrupt. Uh, I mean, okay. Uh, All right, cool. Yeah, man. This is like, you know, like me delving into politics, you know. I'm just familiar with like the most basic knowledge of it, plus maybe a little bit intermediate. But the more I like speak about it with people that know it more about me, the more I get more interested. And I'm like, man, this is like a rabbit hole, like of crazy shit, right? And so what I want to ask you is like, with the whole politics stuff, whenever I saw you for the first time in August was uh, the niggas for Trump uh, in Georgia and Fulton County. How, how, uh, and then my, my, what, not only was that like a great moment, but you called out Fannie Willis. Who is she to you and how is she such a fucking bitch and stupid ass lady? Well, Fannie Willis attended uh, high school with my sister, and she was uh, walking around with her nose, turned out like she was all that doing high school. She was a bullshit in high school. She still won. And uh, I had warned people, you know, I wasn't even living in Atlanta, but I warned people not to vote for her. I said, she's corrupt as hell, and she's going to be unfit to be in leadership position. But somehow she won, and now she's been exposed for the crooked things that she are doing and has done in the past. So I call it out. She's full of shit. And you see now she's full of shit. So I wore the niggas for Trump shirt. I came to Atlanta because uh, President Trump had turned himself in here. So I decided to wear that niggas for Trump shirt because I in New York on Fifth Avenue, I was in front of Trump Tower and I had a Make America Great hat on. And this black woman pulled up in her vehicle Got out with her white wife, and she walked up to me and put her finger in my face and say, "You should be ashamed of yourself. You're a nigga wearing a Trump hat." I said, "You're right." I pointed my finger back at back at her. I said, "You're right. I'm niggas for Trump." So that's how I picked that up, and I ran with it from there. That's fucking badass. Right. So that I embraced fun. it. I was like, "Oh, okay. So you want to call me a nigga, but you claim that uh, you so butt hurt when you hear the word nigga, nigga, even though you listen to rap songs all the time with nigga, nigga in it." Uh, but I'm wearing a cap, and you get upset about that. So when I wore that shirt, and that's what I was telling the people when they got upset about it, I said, y'all listen to rap music right now. I said, nigga, this bitch, that, nigga, 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 nigga. But my shirt says, and you're offended by it. So I was like, straight up, fuck you. And, you know, just went on from there with it. Dude, yeah, you got to keep it real, man. The what we, what we have an issue is with, the, with these, well, with the black community, especially with the Latinos, too is the mere fact that how the fuck can you go to church think a certain way with you know god and every you know you believe in god and all this stuff but yet you think but yet your politics is very leftist like what the how does that make fucking sense right like can you hear me it's it's crazy but she went to church and the black people in the church embraces her after all that she has done and they slap and clap their embraces. So I mean that tells you a lot about today's church. It's despicable. It's done turned to the ways of the world. It's no longer a church that uh follow God and God the ways. Yeah, I mean, because this whole DEI again is being pushed into the churches, the whole mentality, LGBTQ plus A, whatever the fuck. Uh, you know, is being pushed down to churches, and then now they're getting their arms, you know, uh, twisted. Uh, otherwise, they're probably going to lose money as well to up, you know, upkeep these churches, unless you know they embrace the trannies and you know all the LGB, you know, whatever, right? So now churches become also exposed to all the bullshit going on. And- well, they embrace anything that's not of God. 
that thing that man say the church is embracing that now. It's just it's total backwards what the church is supposed to stand for. Yeah. It's it's just it's just it's awful because I've never been a church goer. I've kind of like seen my way through Christianity now. Uh I have a lot of work to do. Um, so I'm not a perfect man. And what's up? Oh, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Here we go. Okay. So, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I'm not a perfect guy. I'm slowly uh, getting myself, you know, uh, to find God before God finds me. You know what <laughs> <Right>. I mean? <laughs> so, uh, Amen, but the, you know, the thing is with me, I I not only have an issue because of my upbringing. I had a very like a very very abusive upbringing. Wow. And sorry. it's because no no it's all good. Uh, I kind of embraced it. It kind of molded me to the man that I am now. Right. And like that's why I'm like a like a staunch supporter of like women that get abused, uh, mm -hmm. children that get abused. When I hear horrific stories about that, it makes me want to grab one of my guns and pistol whip you know these men. That beat the shit out of women and kids. Right, right. Um, yeah. So I, 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 that's why I have the most utmost respect for women. I love women, and I always wanted kids. And because of what I have built in my life now, I'm ready to have them, and I'm never gonna leave them the same way my, you know, my bio biological father left me. You know, and so with having said that, I'm a staunch supporter. For making sure women are always safe. That does not make me a feminist either. That makes me a protector, you know, of what's good for society and humanity. And then, but the problem is, whenever you have these angry ass bitches, they're not called women. They're just fucking bitches. I'm just going to say it out loud. I agree. They, if, because a lady will never be argumentative over the dumbest shit. Look, we know they have, there's, you know, uh, fucking, you know, that time of the month, they're going to get, you know, high hormonal, you know, and argumentative. Sure. That's fine. But when they get in, you know, uh, boss, you know, masculine roles, that is not a very good thing. Like another thing for DEI, they're pushing women to be boss ass bitches. Right. So right. With, with your, with your, uh, with, uh, with what you want to do, what, when do you start running for Senate? Well, I'm running right now. So I'm kicking in high gear in February. Oh, fuck. Yeah, man. And so what, what are your policies that you're going to be pushing for that Senate seat to make sure that you, uh, you know, you beat your rivals? Right, right. So what we got to do is bring America first policies back, which is put the American people first. Uh, what I'm pushing for is to get uh, the tax to get the taxpayers money pulled from the open border agenda that Joe Biden has going on. Uh, law, I want to put law enforcement back in perspective so they can do their jobs and protect the citizen and especially the community that I came from because it affects us the most. So I'm going to be pushing for a lot of things, pushing for uh, uh, social security raises, uh, a whole, that's a host of things. I have a whole list of things that I have down. And, yeah, just, uh, you, know, you don't have to list a whole thing, you know, I'm just going, like, the, like I would say like the, right. what are like the top uh, five, right. I guess. My top five things, number one thing is get law enforcement back where it needs to be. That's number one. So we, I'm going to have the pushing for those kind of policies to get law enforcement back where it needs to be. Didn't, and, oh, by the way, be, let me stop you real quick. Didn't they defund the police quite a bit in the past few years over in New York? That's correct. They did. So oh, I'm fighting fuck. to bring that back and I'm fighting for uh, DHS so we can control our borders so they won't be stepped on the untied hands of uh, the people so they control the uh, illegal immigration that's coming up here that's burdening down the taxpayers. As you know, we're paying $4.5 billion a year to take care of these people that are coming here that haven't contributed nothing to our society. And it's a spit in the face to the illegal uh, immigrants that came here the legal way. So those things, those are my top issues right there. And get this defund uh the department of education need to uh be defunded is absolutely no good for our children anymore yeah damn i that's uh those are interesting points 
Uh, I unfortunately don't know too much about any of that uh, other than, you know, the defund the police and uh, the uh, the DHS uh, situation. But but like how how would you move forward? Like, say you get elected right now. How does that work as a senator? Right. Like how like would you be able to like be like, hey, uh, now that I, you know, I represent New York, but any illegals, they can't pass these borders into New York. Is that how that would work? Or like. Right, but you have to put forth the right legislation, put it forth in uh, caucus with uh, your fellow senators and see if we get it to move forward. That's what you would have to do. You just can't walk in there and say, oh, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. It's, it don't work like that. Government do not work like that. You got to uh, caucus, represent your district, caucus hard, write legislation, introduce that legislation, and try to get it brought to the floor so uh, you can get a vote on it so that's the only way to get things really done but you got the constituents behind you in that particular district uh they're going to listen to you but it's going to take everybody in that particular district to be behind you to get these uh legislative acts enacted in congress yeah i mean i mean do you have anything like say you were to get elected is there anything that the, what would be like the first thing you want to put in place immediately would it be, well, I don't know, the, the, the open borders or education or the, the, the police? First, the first thing I want to put in place will be with this, with uh, getting rid of the Department of Education. That absolutely need to go because it's detrimental to uh, our students. It needs, goes back in the hands of the counties and the cities. We do not need a Department of Education, especially in the state of New York. Uh, they in the building bigger than look better than the Supreme Court in the United States of America. It's a complete waste of money. They are pushing the LGBT agenda and other things in the school system, uh, grooming kids for uh, sexual education, all types of things. So that's my first thing uh, would be try to get rid of the Department of Education. Then after that, work on the border issue. I want to work with I would like to work with the governor, the males, try to uh, deport any person that is illegally in this country, deport them out. The state of New York, anyway. I don't care where they go, as long as they go out the state of New York, because I don't want the taxpayers to be burdened uh, taking care of these people. Our veterans are suffering, and it's, it's sad. As you can see, I got my hands full with this grandbaby. He's wow. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, hey, it doesn't matter. You know why? That's a what? What did you say earlier? That's a that's a huh? <laughs> say again. <laughs> no. What What'd you say about your little baby? What is he again? I say he baby niggas for Trump. I said, why you baby niggas for Trump? He's because granddad, I want a future. <laughs> baby he's niggas for Trump. Hey, look, he's, a right. he, he, he's a year old and he already know what he need. They said, the granddaddy got me. So I want to be able to spend my money like granddaddy did. Granddaddy lived a good life and I want that same type of life. If granddaddy say that's what he need, that's what it is. <laughs> where, where, how old is uh, your little child right there? He's a year old. Damn. And he gets he's going to be crying. Computer. He gets my social security retirement. I don't bother. It goes directly to him. So when he get about 20 years old, he'll be worth about three or four million dollars. <laughs> Damn. Hey, can I be adopted by chance? Or is that too late? <laughs> right, I mean, you, right. You and I kind of look alike. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm just a little bit more hood than you. Sorry. This is, this is how it is. Oh, I go there all the way. I go there all the way. <laughs> no, that's that's a beautiful thing, man. Right, that's, I can uh, get Huh? Especially when I say niggas for Trump, but it hurt a lot of people feeling. I had one guy call me from Texas. You should be ashamed of yourself. When wearing that shirt on there saying niggas for Trump, I said, hey, man, let me ask you. He called my phone. I said, hey, man, let me ask you one thing. Which ear did you hear that in? I said, I come a sergeant with my screwdriver. I said, I'm gangster like that. So if you're offended by that because the white liberal told you to be offended by the word nigga, then so be it. I'm not offended. I'm going to speak any word I want to speak. Crackers, niggas, honkers, whatever I want to say. I'm going to say that I'm mad enough to say that and it don't offend me. So it definitely shouldn't offend anybody else. Correct. Yeah. I used to be so like triggered by shit like that, you know? And cause I remember I was a little bitch. I was very feminized growing up because my mama, you know? Uh, but like, I said, Oh, look at, let me see him. Let me see him. Say hi. Look, say hi. What's up little man. Oh man. That's so cute. Well, thank you. <laughs> that's his thank you he's like he's like hey he's too light to be a nigga dad <laughs> right right <laughs> that's not true i have proof and, and that's God what I damn it. 
I said, nigga is not a skin color. Nigga is an action. That's what a nigga is. <laughs> Bro, I, I say that to my friends all the time. I use it as an adjective, as a verb. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Like, man, you niggering around with me, man. Right. Come on, man. Some nigga shit right there, bro. But you know, in New York, in New York, uh, the Spanish people just use that every single day. You know, somebody come from the South, you know, they'd be like, what the hell? Because this, I, that just say communication. They mean, my old nigga, what's up? Nigga, this, nigga. Spanish people always. <laughs> Bro, I know. I used to, I used to, I used to be, I used to go to uh, New York quite often back in like mm -hmm. twenty between like twenty fourteen and twenty eighteen. Mm -hmm. I haven't been since twenty eighteen, but yeah, man. When I, well, I would run into some Brooklyn uh, Harlem guys, you know, some Dominicans and shit, right? And uh, they'd be like, "Yo, yo, what's up, nigga?" I'm like, "He's like, this is like the first time in New York." I'm like, oh, man, "Those are my peeps," <laughs> you know. But I'm not Dominican though. I'm Honduran and uh, and black. Yeah. But, but yeah. they didn't, it's like they saw like the blackness to me. I'm like, it's my nigga too, man. I can't say that <laughs> shit in Florida though. That's a problem because oh no, no, in New York we can say that freely. You can say that no, no. I mean, freely. I mean, I can say that and and here in Florida, but whenever uh like uh like in the black community, they see like oh yeah yeah he's definitely one of us and like the smart yeah. blacks right the smart niggas, right. but the hood ones that have never been properly educated outside of you know their house. Outside their doorsteps selling drugs, they immediately be like, Man, look at this guy trying to act like one of us. I'm like, bitch, I am more than you. I got out. <laughs> like, let me show you the fucking way. I've done uh -huh. that once already. And it helped out. I don't think I can do it again because I'm not gonna like kind of shit in my pants. I've had a gun pointed at me enough times in my life to know where I can or can't go. But that's a problem yeah. though. Politicians are too afraid to tell these people in these bad neighborhoods. How to actually succeed in America? Right. I'm not they saying everyone want. has to be a millionaire. That's not going to be the case. But they don't people want to have to be succeed. realistic. They right. have to have ambition. There's lack of ambition in these bad neighborhoods, including right. and, you know the worst victims are actually the black communities. They're saying get abortions, and, oh like nothing. Oh, yeah. You know the the government will take care of it. No, yeah, you have to fucking rap or fucking play basketball to be successful. No, you don't. It, it just baffles me how they're still stuck in this like enslaved mentality thinking that they're they can't, they're, they don't they can't amount to no good like i told All you right. earlier i am a fucking immigrant I, I didn't learn how to speak american until i was like 10 years old when i moved at 6 years old and mm -hmm. then there's no excuse for people that are born here to actually do better than me if not you know sky is high here all right this is a miracle i i i believe in capitalism and it's fucking working out great, you know, and I just right. have a GED. That's right. all I have. Right. So if anyone like me can do it, they can barely speak American, there's no excuses for anybody that can't do that, right? Right. You definitely can make it if you apply yourself to it. You can make it. A lot of people just don't apply themselves. So they become, they take up the victim mentality. Like, I can't, you know, that's their thing. I can't, I can't. They won't let me. But it, it, actually, you incarcerate No, your the white man mind. won't let me. The white yeah. man won't let me. You know, right. that fake that fake racist mentality, you know? Like, no. Right. As a matter of fact, it doesn't matter what your color is. There's always going to be someone to push you to go there. You just got to find the right, you know, um, people to influence you in life. Don't right. go to fucking Tyrone because he's still drinking his 40 at 40 years old. Same, you know, fucking, you know, plastic couch. All right. You have to like seek somebody that does, you know, well for themselves. See, look at the, you look at the man in a, in a suit, you know, don't look at his skin color. Ask him, what did he do to look that nice? Right. 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 Like whenever I went, uh, when I went to Baltimore, I remember I went to one of my buddy's houses. He didn't, he doesn't amount to shit. And I try to, you know, take him out. And then, you know what he said to me? He's like, look at this nigga and his nigga tie. I'm like, hey, man, I'm trying to help you out. And uh, I'm trying the best I can here, man. Like, he's like, why are you talking like a white man? I'm like, bro, it's not like a white man. You just got to know what's out there in the world, man. It's right. the people, they, they're they they're just enslaved in their own mind. that They, 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 they don't think they can amount to anything. The they problem are. is, the, but we need people like you. Like, I, I wish I had more, like, you know, visibility, but even I'm trying to get out there and be like, man, how the fuck can we get these people out of these fucking their couches and shit, stop right. living off welfare, and then be, you know, screwing in life and not even surviving past 30 because they've been shot. You know right. what I mean? Right. 
So right, I don't right. even know where to even begin with that. I've, that's not really been my main, you know, huge target focus uh, on, but that is something I definitely like, you know, uh, that enlightens me to get better with, right? Not just with our community, but with other communities. You know what I mean? I don't see, when I meet people in, right, like these days, I don't see your skin tone. I see the personality. I see what kind of like, you know, knowledge I can get from you. Even if you like, lack, right. you know, education, I'm always learning something from everybody. You, Everyone does. People just don't realize it. And the only issue is that we have is everybody's attached to their fucking phones. And no one, everyone thinks they can learn everything about somebody by just, I don't know, Googling somebody. And that's not the case. Right. Because you and I have personalities. All right. People need to know who we are in person. Right. So, I mean, that's what that's what we need to push. And someone like you, I feel like can be like everyone needs to get the off their phones. You know, uh, you know, you you guys need to go touch grass. You guys want to be good, you know, uh, husbands and you know fathers. Don't leave your women. You know, uh, right. you know what I mean. Like someone in your position, they can push something like that to a wider audience because you 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 know you have that visibility, right? Especially right. when you run for governor. You definitely have a voice. I mean, I listen to you and I'm like, man, I got to talk to this guy. I want to <laughs> learn from this guy because maybe one day I could run and I'm going to get crushed right. by them, you know, probably pulling up. You know, I'm pretty open, though. Like everyone knows I've been arrested and shit. Even my companies right. I used to work for, I used to work for the government. They know exactly what I've been through. You can't hide that shit, right? Right. Me too. Me too. I'm about to tell everybody, I don't have nothing to hide. If we got a wreck, you got a wreck. Yeah. I'm like, I, yeah. I, I, I had a long record. I was bad as hell when I was a kid, shoot, and a teenager. I didn't give a damn, really. <laughs> so, hey, you know, that's life. You go through life, you correct yourself, and then you try to make things better. You run for office and try to change what you think is unjust. So that's what I decided to do. Yeah, and that's why you are a perfect byproduct of success so you can show to these bad communities that a lot of these politicians are too scared to go to. You know what I mean? Right, right. So you have that verb, that verbiage, and you have that swagger to actually wake up New York, especially like you guys are so fucking liberal out there. You guys have Trump derangement syndrome. It is so <laughs> bad. Like, I had a girl that I know there. She fucking doesn't like what's going on in New York, and she refuses to even, you know, accept Trump at all or any Republican. I'm like, girl, this is the shit that you voted for right now. What Eric right. uh, Adams is doing right now, Mayor Adams. Right. That's just bullshit that you fucking did. You want to make it better? Stop voting for that dumbass. Look what's going on in Chicago. Same thing, but worse over there. I right. Mean, I, I mean, oh, let me ask you this. Have you ever, like, have you gotten spats with um, uh, Mayor Adams and uh, the Chicago uh, dickhead? <laughs> well, I talked to Mayor Adams and I went back and forth with him. I personally know Mayor Adams from the police force. So, hey guys, oh. the, uh, Mayor Adams is wish you, I would say he on the fence. He go both ways. He tried to go please people on both sides, which uh, is just not going to work because you got to stand firm on the issues that are correct in life. You need to stand firm on them. So he was trying to thread the water so this person won't feel bad. That person won't feel bad. I mean, it's crazy, man. It's kind of hypocritical to me. But Adams is, uh, I knew he was going to be like he is now. It's, like I say, worthless. Uh, he works for the city of New York. Uh, they're going to bankrupt New York City. He said all the legal aliens was welcome. Everybody was welcome. And now he crying like that bitch he really is when they don't, when Texas was sent him up at a flood. I mean, then they got nerd want to sue Texas. No, really, dude. You said they was wel welcome. Y'all want the open border, so bring him on. He went and visited uh, Honduras, South America, all that, and came back. Yeah, I think the border still should stay open. I was like, what a sack of shit this guy is. So he's controlled by the globalists. Uh, most of them get up there, they're controlled by the globalists, and they're going to stick to the nonsense that uh, is destroying America. Yeah, I mean, you said you knew him personally. I know you don't want to badmouth him. I mean, but you can still disagree with his policy, obviously. Right. Without, you know, bad mouthing anybody. Right. But the problem is that we have now, uh, I know oh, you can, the problem is with America, I don't know how it is in like New York, but here in Florida, it's gotten to the point where it's very rare you, you find a liberal, especially in my area, where I'm at, it's so conservative. Like, uh -huh. like when, uh, like, uh, there's, you can tell who is not conservative or even right or even moderate. 
you can just right. tell who's not. Like I have a, I like two doors down from here, I have a Democrat, you know, uh, neighbor. He didn't. He thought I was a Democrat because of my skin color. <laughs> he immediately right. was like, right, like, you, you know, and I'm like, oh, bro, uh, you see, you know, I got MAGA shit, bro. Like, right, dude, we're we're not just stereotypical niggas over here, bro. Right. Like, <laughs> like me and my mom, we're fucking like, you know, we're Trumpers, you know, like her house has a bunch of like. You know, Trump shit and my place just has like a Trump, you know, like flag or American flag, you know, 100 percent like we are like all American. We bleed red, white and blue. We don't right. bleed just blue. Right. So and then this guy, after he saw like, you know, how like you know, like I, I have my MAGA shit. This dude looks at me like a piece of shit. So <laughs> like he, he, he doesn't even like acknowledge me anymore. I'm, like, I'm always saying hi to him. But we're also in this day and age where you can't even be friends anymore. Anymore. I mean, I can. I can be friends with anybody. I don't even shit which way yeah. you think. Right. Just but, because you had that opinion don't mean you can't be friends. I mean, it's pathetic, man. Show you how divided and corrupt things have become that neighbors can't like each other because you have a different of opinion. That's totally nonsense. It is, and uh, it is it is super nonsense. Like I remember in the nineties, I didn't, I don't, I remember there was there might have been people that, uh, thought differently, sure, but no one ever saw it. Everyone just got along, you know. Like it didn't, we didn't start seeing this divide, and you know, our in, in the population until uh, Trump got elected as president in twenty sixteen. Right. You know, like even I was a little bit liberal at that time, and <laughs> I was even pissed off like uh, Trump was, you know, in office. But I was also growing as a person at the time. And I'm like, damn, I fucked up. I've been thinking this way for so long. Holy shit. Right. Like, you're like, you're like, I guess, like, what I want to ask you is how do you, how, what's the good, what's the first step? <laughs> what's the first step to like open up these guys' minds, you know, like in America, like, and especially in New York? What would be the first step to like open your, like, the citizens of New York, their eyes, you know, to see that what's going on is bad? Well, you have to talk and you have to point out policy and who is responsible for the policy that is making the uh, cities and the country go downhill. And you talk with common sense. You don't argue, no argument. Listen to them. Then they let them listen to you. And I promise you, they'll come around. I have turned so many people around just by talking to them, having a friendly conversation. I was in Atlanta, Georgia, and I went up to uh, East Village, I believe is what they call it. And I talked to them, they very liberal. And I wore the uh, niggas for Trump shirt up there, and, and they mostly white liberals. And they would hold a conversation with me. It was no argument. It was real friendly and nice. And they would ask me, well, why you support Trump? And I would tell them why I support Trump and why they should support Trump. They're talking about, oh, I never thought about that. You know, I mean, these people, if you talk to them intelligent, not screaming, not arguing with them, you can get them to come around. Now I've changed a lot of people's mind about President Trump from just having a general conversation with them and what what uh, Trump did when he was in office and how not to listen to the media that is pushing this bullshit narrative out because Trump exposed the powers to be. Damn. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like you said in your video, oh uh, yeah, these indictments are bullshit. <laughs> right. Right. They are. Uh, uh, Fanny Willis is a puppet for white liberals. I, I remember you saying that. Uh, you know, make Trump king. Fuck presidency. Make right. Trump king, man. Make us, but we keep our rights, you know. <laughs> and I said that just to piss them liptards off. Oh, you That's pissed them I said, off. I knew it was going to get them stereo steer the pot. That's why I said it, it pissed the liberals off. The black liberals, the white liberals. There's nothing worse than a, a white liberal than a black liberal. A black liberal just that it all the way. It's insanity coming from. If you're a black liberal, you being direct controlled by the white lip tar that pushed all this nonsense out on society that men can have babies, men can menstruate, all types of lunatic ideals and lunatic things that they have pushed on society uh, through the LGBT community trying to uh, emasculize men. It gets too much, too much toxic mask. It's insane that things that come out of their mouth, man. And it's it's very hurtful to see people listen to that and carry on with it and try to de emasculate men, man. It's pathetic and, and total insanity. Yeah, man. It is it is uh it is a it's pretty fucked up, man, because it, it just 
it's all is it it all it all circles back to the same shit. DEI, WF, BlackRock. They've been right. pushing this shit for fucking years and pushing billions of dollars for this shit. I was telling uh, my audience the other day, uh, I will never sell my soul to any of that bullshit. I you know, I just recently turned down a multi million dollar investment opportunity because i my I had a lawyer of mine look into the details of the investment and I realized, well, that is I don't believe in that bullshit. They had right. DEI you know, sneaking in there, you know. Like if you have right. a certain amount of employees, you have to, you know, you know, abide by these, you know, these regulations and policies. Right. I said, no, sir. I said, fuck that. My my That's I do not have a price for you know for bullshit. But then That's I had to great. think about it. I do have a price. It's gonna be mm -hmm. ten billion dollars. Mm -hmm. I will right. spread I will I will spread the tranny agenda. I will spread the fucking oh. gay agenda. I will, man, I will be like, you know what? Fuck the white man, fuck them, man. <laughs> ten billion dollars. I will fucking spread that falsehood. And that's what they want out there. <laughs> But by the way, no I just I definitely want to say that I love my mom. I love my family. I don't I'm never going to kill myself for, you know, shitting on DEI right. and all this stuff. Right. So anyone that's watching, I love my fucking life. All right. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but and uh, all right. So I had another thing here. Uh, the all right. The OK, let's talk about Trump a little bit. Right. The, mm -hmm. How um, the overexcitement that you had the other day, I can tell you're really excited on the phone. What happened there? If you don't mind, you know, if you if you can divulge any in details, if you if you if you're willing to, not give us a little tease of you know with Trump uh, situation. Like, are you gonna be part of his board or his advisory? You know, you know, uh, can uh, vans or what? Well, come on, man, give me give me some little give me some well, cute. Man. I'm very I'm very close to the Trump, very close to in, on the inside of the Trump team uh, anyway. But I'm going to be sitting on a panel and we're going to be traveling in the country. Me, uh, Dr. Ben, Scott, Kareem, uh, a couple more okay. people going to be sitting on a, a panel holding town halls the rest of this particular year. So you'll see me out there and you'll realize what's really going on with uh, niggas for Trump because I'm going to be part of it. They invited me because they say I have no filter and that's what America needs. Somebody right now that has no filter that can tell the truth about things. So that is that's me and that's right. why they want and that's why they wanted me to be part of the panel. So I'll be sitting on the panel with Dr. Scott, uh, Dr. Ben Carson sometime, and we'll be traveling in the United States. Uh, okay, I have someone that wants to ask you a question before I go back to my questions. Uh, someone asked, uh, why, do, why do you think the black vote is so heavily Democrat when the Democrats voted against the 13th and 15th Amendments? Because they don't study and they are unaware of uh, what happened in the past. So this is why they, uh, the black community is easily manipulated because they do not study. You need to study so you can know what's going on and make a a uh, decision that is going to be beneficial for your community. And not only that, you, uh, for America itself. So this is why the uh, blacks have been voting Democrats because they want to they're like a hamster in a cake, they dangle a little cheese, they give them a little welfare, give them a little food stamp, and okay, I can sit on my ass and live off of that. So that's what the Democrat Party do. And you think right, you're yeah. getting something, and you're not being offered a piece of the American dream. President Trump came, he offered the black community a piece of the American dream. Black business right. increased. I'm a businessman. I own a construction company also. Black business increased under President Trump by 400%, and I would have been a billionaire right now, but Joe Biden wiped that out the first day. We was doing the contracts to do the uh, black colleges, all of them, to do the dormitories. We was going to do the uh, the stadium, uh, dome stadium for uh, Jackson State, where Deion Sanders was, was in talks to do all of that until Biden wiped it out the first day on the job. So President Trump was get, getting the black community a piece, a way to get a piece of the American dream instead of uh, a handout. And they did not like that. Uh, the Democratic Party did not like it, and blacks should open their eyes up and see that President Trump had the uh, Opportunity Zone and the $500 billion uh, platinum plan for the black community to start the black businesses, you know, do whatever we need to do. And he never got to enact that. The news media drowned him out, calling him a racist. And I'm sorry to say, but the black community is easily manipulating. They believe every damn thing uh, that the mass media push out there. And I don't understand it either because one time the black community didn't believe in the news media. So I don't know where they come from believing in that all at once. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, I, 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 I brought this up shortly in one of your spaces uh, recently about the inconvenient truth about the Democratic Party. Um, you know how a lot of these people don't know where the KKK uh, came from, where, you know, uh, you know how the Republican Party uh, well, you know, and you know they they founded the uh, the anti-slavery party. They were the actual anti-slavery party up to this day, but yet, right. but yet, no matter what you know we say, no matter what color skin tone you are, they're they're it's so hard for them to know and to even just do a ser slight Google <laughs> search about how the Democratic uh, Party was formed and why it was formed and. It's so crazy that they're the ones that defended slavery and, you know, they started the Civil right. War and they opposed Reconstruction. They fell right. with the Ku Klux Klan, imposed segregation, perpetrated lynchings, and fought against the Civil Rights Acts of the 1950s and 60s. Right. That's what the kids need to learn these days. They don't know shit about right. this at all. I knew this from, like, you know, years ago. And the problem is, they're, the the education boards right now they're more focused on the fucking tranny shit and gay shit right and right. fatherless bullshit uh, boss ass bitch mentality feminist shit not learning what is real and real America they're not learning literature they're not learning simple math they're not learning well, simple like you know language structure well, and how to that's, speak that's the, that's the Democrats playbook they want to keep you dumb down so they can control you that is their playbook and this is why you know that all these phones and everything out now, you can Google stuff and find out yourself. You don't have to be ignorant any longer. You know, you can find out yourself. You can educate yourself. You don't need the school. You need none of that shit. You can educate yourself. And parents need to start educating their kids at home instead of just throwing them into the school system to become brainwashed. Correct. And that's what's going on with this wor uh, world right now. It's not just over here. You know, well, Canada's already fucked. Oh yeah. Uh, unless that unless that new guy, you know, somehow wins Trudeau uh, or wins over the Canadian people, which I think Canadians are slowly waking up now. But I don't know if it's going to be enough people out of that, right. uh, you know, that woke mentality yet. And then you have uh, England. Well, the whole UK in general is is completely fucking just bonkers now. I used to live in England. I didn't notice that back in twenty uh, two thousand eight through two thousand ten. Uh -huh. But I wasn't obviously I was much younger at the time, so I didn't really focus on politics or anything. But now that I have been and how bad England is like for crying out loud, if you even like not even touch a girl, but just say like, hi, and she feels uncomfortable. That's automatic, like a sexual harassment thing. That shit is sake. pathetic, man. It, makes it is. So no yeah, it's terrible. Then. It's like that. It's terrible. It, it, like what? Like. Let me ask you this. So, because I want to hit up on a little bit of men's right activism a little bit. I don't know how much you know about uh, MRA type stuff, but I'm the kind of guy because I've been in uh, pretty uncomfortable situations in my life where I thought I was going to go to fucking prison because I'm a guy. Uh, I got I got accused, uh, you know, falsely accused of, you know, some fucking bad shit, like, you know, rape before. Wow. And the and the reason why I got away with it because I had text messages and I had you know witnesses people that even hated me were like nah Berto's not like that you know he actually right. never went in a room with that person and he fucking left you know what I mean right and what I what I want to fight is or what I want to like find out is because if you get put in a position hell you're already kind of in it without being a you know you're it's like you're you're a power player already without having that official power. You know, right. position, if that makes sense, right? Right, right. What I wanna what I wanna do is I wanna know is how can we push the agenda to fucking have these falsehoods of at real, you know, these fucking falsehood allegations against fucking innocent men and put those women in you know their places and have them face the same consequences that the men would have done or would have had if they were guilty of it. How can we, you know, push that more forward and put that in the eyes of the public so women, there, because there are actual victims of rape, right? right? And guess what? They're the ones actually more scared to go and approach police because of the falsehoods that they rarely hear about. And because right. the falsehoods, the women that cry wolf are doing it more than ever. So right. my, my question to you is, 
how can we put that into place where the, the, you know the general public, whether you lean left or right, doesn't matter. How can we put that in you know into a narrative where the whole world will put fear into the woman, these fucked up women that are doing this to good men? Well, I don't how think can we, we do could, that. We already have law. So we need to start applying the law equally between male and female. When women make those false accusations like they're doing President Trump, those, they, them women should be forced to go to prison for making false accusations. That's the only way it's going to stop. When they realize it's going to be consequences for them lying, they've been lying so long and getting away with it, and the courts lean you know, towards the woman and everything the woman say, once it's proven it's not true, they should be sentenced to time, not uh, not the case thrown out or whatever. That's not good enough. They need to learn a lesson, go to prison, just like you would send a man, and uh, that'll stop a whole lot of this accus false accusation that is going on. Yeah, I just don't feel that we, uh, us men, we we're we're getting immediately like you know uh, crucified for fuck's sake. Me, we are. I like I literally lost a, a contract years ago because uh, they. I, whenever that, that, that happened, this happened to me when I was still in the military over 10 uh -huh. years ago. Right. And guess what? Uh, it took three months for them to clear me out. Right. But it was still in like, it was still like, you know, documented with the police. I was never arrested. I mean, I was detained, but never went to jail. You know what I mean? Right, they only right. questioned me, but it was uh what do you call it? It wasn't a charge. It was fucking Accusation. something else before I mean Right. What? It wasn't, it wasn't a charge, but it was an allegation made against you. Correct. It was an allegation yeah. made against me, and then I guess there, it said that there was a charge, and then they got dropped or whatever because they found the person there. But regardless, uh, whenever oh, okay. uh, a contract was looking into my background, uh, they, they were like, oh, this guy's like, you know, shit hot with everything he does. But then they right. found that because uh, even though I was those were dropped, they fucking still looked at me like I was a fucking like, rapist, right? Right, but no you matter what, your record. you need to seal your record so they can't look at it, can't pull it. Only somebody to be able to see it is if you get in trouble with law enforcement again, they can pull up. No one else would be able to pull that up. I and mean, I do that for a lot of people that think they can't vote, they can't carry guns. I seal their record. This what this is what have to be done. There's stuff out there that you can do to keep uh from losing your uh livelihood. So seal your record so they can't pull it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's that's all great and all, but like, how about like people that can't even afford it? Like, people are, uh, I mean, we're we're looking right now at people losing their livelihood over these false accusations. Be it's it's all what do you call it? the uh, the court of public opinion? You know, they're right. getting crucified immediately without even going to court, real court, and then it it it, it, it puts a wrench into their livelihood, right? Then they can't right. support you know their own families, or they can't support themselves. And guess what? Guess what happens? Because they don't know what's going on, they kill themselves. Right, exactly. That's what they do. It's sad, though. People don't think it's not a way out, but it is a way out. I don't care about any of the accusation, what anybody say when I know that I am true, I am right. I don't give a damn about that, and I just keep going. It matters to me not, but there's a lot of people out there, it does matter to them. And it's not that expensive to clean your record. I do that for a lot of people. It's not that expensive. We'll talk, off, we'll talk offline. And, oh, yeah, for um, sure. I'm going to help you see your record, but there are ways out, and that's one thing I cannot say. I love women. I respect women. I treat them as the Amen. Bible had me to told me to treat them because they are part of me. They took the real for me, and they created woman. So I treat a woman very respect. I came from a woman. I was born through a woman. I have sisters. I have daughters. So I give them all the respect in the world. But when I got one like this last wife right here, throwing all kind of accusation out, lying on me, saying this. Now, I mean, that makes me mad as hell. Like you said, it makes you want to do something too. But I know better. I wouldn't do that. But I mean, it's, it's when right now, I served up with a cease and desist. I'm also suing her for about $2 million, which she don't have, but it's going to be on the down record because I don't like people to lie on me. I took care oh, of Oh, yeah. Woman. Slander is the worst. Right, right. I had, I had, I had to go through that shit. Oh, right. it was bad, man. Yeah. I treat this woman like a queen. Open car doors, everything. I treat like a man supposed to treat a woman. And she did not appreciate it because I left her because she wouldn't listen to me. So I got out the car and walked away. And then after I walked away, then I have employees start telling me about, oh, yeah, she's been sleeping with a woman. I'm like, huh? Yeah, one of y'all employees. And she was paying her this type of money. So my business, I'm taking my business and paying the salaries because, of, oh, well, the business that she started haven't got on its feet.
And come to find out she paying this girl forty five hundred dollars every two weeks, you know, and then getting money for me to pay salary. I mean, just ridiculous thing that she was doing. Now she upset and she mad because I left her. I mean, hey, you left your dick for a cake. Hey, so that's that in a story. Yeah, man. So live it and leave me alone. Yeah, man. Uh, damn. That, that, yeah, it's, it's just crazy for us men. And no one gives a oh, yeah. fuck about us. That's the problem. Right, uh, right. Yeah, every, because we live in an egalitarian society now. No right. one gives a shit about us. People not don't. That's system, why I'm fighting not, hard. Huh? Right. The court system, no, but you hardly have a win anywhere when it comes to that. Exactly. We're talking about not just, you know, the false accusations. We're talking about, you know, uh, alimony, child support. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, oh, everything wor working in a woman's, uh, you know, favor for everything. Like a woman right. can have a heroin needle in, in her arm uh -huh. showing up in court and she's still going to win. You know, right. custody of their of your children. You know, right? Like, it, like I, I, this is where I, this is where I, uh, this is where I uh, definitely want to like have your help in uh, as well. I'm willing to put down so much money, my own money, to see if there's anyone ballsy enough to fight this in the you know the you know the court in the, in the public you know way to help out men and right. the, where it's not you know so lopsided anymore, right? Right. Like, well, for example, I also would like to see if there's can be some sort of change in America. Probably not going to happen in my lifetime. Uh, I I, I want to have like a plan, which I kind of have set up, where if you know where my grandkids are going to be safe if I have boys, right? Right. So they don't have to like worry about you know marriage and getting all their shit taken, and also you know falsehoods, and also where marriage is actually a real meaningful thing, not a contract, you know, a monetary contract anymore. That's the problem with the women these days. Modern women right now are only getting married for money, mainly tax purposes, and then they, they get bored, they're not happy, and they fucking leave their dudes high and dry. Like, bitch, you didn't earn all that, you know? Like, you just fucking, you know, stole everything from the guy that you said you supposedly loved and maybe have had a kid with. That's the that, that's what I'm trying to fight, and that's why I'm trying to find the right people. Who can I speak with? I mean, I'm speaking with you, and I know you can help me out. And and this is what I this is what I truly care for, and also helping veterans not kill themselves because they have right. one of the highest suicide rates right, right now because they get they leave the military because they have within the military you have good camaraderie. I don't know how it is now, but ten years ago and before that. You build a good relationship with everybody within the military. It was very good back then. Right, right. And, correct. you know, but a lot of people are not seeing that anymore because the, the, the world has gone to shit a little bit. So when they get out, they don't have the proper help. They just say, oh, go to the VA. Okay, what about the proper steps to it? You got to push, you know, they need a little bit of a push. And I mean, you can tell them they're going to get a million dollars. They still, they're, they're still going to be thinking about it. What they need to have is an incentive, not just the money-wise, but to carry on with life. You know what I mean? Right, right, correct. So not many people like to speak on that because it's a sensitive subject and no one gives a fuck about men. They only care about all these women, all the women's. That's correct. That's correct. We've got to fight and stand up for ourselves and stop discount uh, what a, a guy say. Everybody look at, oh, the guy said it. It's not true for whatever. So they're going, they don't. <laughs> Because there's a lot of evil women out here. We have got to start fighting and pushing back against them. Yeah, man. There, it, there's a lot of evil in the world right now. Right. And it it and it sucked. And that's what I'm trying to do is, you know, I want to find I want to find the right people where I can get in contact with, you know, invest some money in. And I'm, like I said, it's not gonna happen in my future, but I hope it happens in your kids, you know, your grandkids' future. Where he's right. gonna be safe, you know, and right? And it might is, happen in your future. Things moving so rapidly, so it could happen, you know, during our time. I mean, I really wanted to, but I don't know, man. I'm I'm 36 years old, turning 37 in, in June. I don't see it happening in my time. When I was your age, you know, I could fight more for it. But when you get to be my age, Derek, <laughs> shit gets rough, man. You know, I mean, like these like niggas don't crack. I mean, look at this skin, right. bro. Right. Like, look at this. Right. <laughs> No, no, but on, on like on a serious note though, this this is what I I strive for because women like to shit on men, and it's okay apparently to shit on us. Oh, yeah, I oh, mean, yeah. and then we say we can't even give any like slight criticism, you know, like, oh, I think your dress is a little, you know, 
oh, too no. tight. Oh my God, you know, like you, you sound like you're a fucking misogynist. It's like, bitch, I'm trying to help you, you know. Like I don't want, right. I don't want my, I don't want my girl with her tits out and shit like that, you know. Right. Like I don't want that shit. Like how this is like you're you're representing me, girl, when we're out. That's Even when right. you're not right. with me, you're still representing me. You know, we got to kill this feminist ideology out, and it's you know it, it bothers me that you know people like us, especially. You know what? I'm just gonna say it. the the blacks. You know, they're the ones getting blamed the most because it's the black women yelling at us the most. Yeah, you know, why y'all niggas going to fucking you know Asia getting women because they're feminine. They're not argumentative. You know, right. yeah, they just want that green card. Well, they're gonna get it once they get a few of my kids, and they're not gonna be bitching. They're gonna be That's in the right. house in the kitchen, and you know they're gonna be just chilling. What are you gonna do? Yell at me and get fat. That's all you're gonna do. Yeah, it's crazy out there, man. I'm talking about it. it's crazy. The world upside down, brother. Yeah, man. But uh, I guess uh, just I, I, I that's all I have for right now. I I, I have more stuff offline. I definitely want to get in touch with you, but um, is uh, I, I'm glad that you showed up, man. Sorry about everybody that showed up the other day. I'm glad I kept everyone entertained, though. We had some technical issues. Now we got them here. I wish we had better lighting, but uh, right, or better view. I was about to say I'd definitely be back real soon with Bella Lightning and all because I was at the house and I was babysitting. Then I had to leave, <laughs> but I wanted to come on. But I actually want to sit down and have a great, great interview with you and a lot of a lot of more stuff I need to say that I want to say. Say it, but... say it, dude. We're on Rumble. Fucking say it. You can call me a faggot. You can call me a cunt. You can say whatever you want. Say whatever you want. You say it right now. Say it. I'm telling you to say it. I hold it for to the next time. <laughs> All right, God damn it! But, but everyone, by the way, suspense. hey, by the way, everybody, niggas for Trump all the way. If you don't support that shit, get the fuck out of here. All right, God damn it! I don't support no goddamn, Twitter. huh? I told him to follow me on Twitter at Gibson for Senate. Yep, I, your your Twitter handle is already on the bottom right here for you. Everyone's Great. seeing it right now. So, yeah, man, I got you all plugged up. Everyone, go follow Mr. Gibson. Vote for him too. And you know, go in and follow him on the trail. He's gonna be on the Trump trail also. I've just been so fucking, you know, grateful. And, and I'm, 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 gonna be, I'm on my campaign trail. I'm gonna be wearing my niggas for Trump shirt too, making campaign. And I, guess what? I'm gonna wear it. I'm gonna wear it too. I'm gonna start I, wearing it on my streams when I get that shit. Picture. Post a picture for me, okay? Nah, man, I'm not posting a picture. I'm gonna be live doing it. It's gonna be better. <laughs> right now, we're on Twitter. We're on Twitter live right now, by the way. Right, right. <laughs> so you can re you can go back on this and you know share it to all your audience too. So you gotta be you gotta realize everybody has to realize it's not about skin tone. It's not about you know uh you know what you know it's not about victim right. blaming anymore. It's about what's what's what we have to do is what's right for America, right? right. Everyone oh, needs to fucking open up their fucking eyes and realize it's going to shit. The more left, the more like Democrat is going, it's just going to go worse. So, right, and we all got to come together, put our differences aside, come together, and let's save this fucking country. Save this fucking country. Niggas, right. spicks, bing bongs, whites, who fucking cares? We gotta right. fucking, we're, we're one team, one family, one fight. We fucking right, bleed red, it. white, and blue. You don't want these socialist fucks coming over here, jumping the border from fucking like Uganda or some shit or Afghanistan, acting like they're Mexicans. You don't want right. that shit. For right. fuck's sake, we have a big problem, and that is a fucking issue. We need to get right with each other, touch some fucking grass, vote for what's right, and guess what? Niggas for Trump. Niggas for Trump 2024, baby. All right, yes, Mr. Gibson. Sir. You, hey, man, I appreciate you coming on the show. I'm gonna uh, and uh, you go ahead and take care of your baby. I'm gonna have another interview set up uh, again where it's more, you know, uh, standardized. <laughs> right. It was an honor. It was an honor to be on your show. I'm sorry that uh, I'm not 100 percent prepared. It is my time to babysit, so I was like, I got to yep. do this and babysit at the same time. No, bro, I, dude, I, I actually commend you for this, and you, you know, you could have cut this off anytime you wanted to, also with your kid. But I, I'm just grateful that you actually had the time for this. So, and because you know, I, I, this has been great, and I'm always gonna go try and get in your spaces when I'm not busy with my work. So, just like I did like a few times ago. So, it, I, like I said, it's great honor, and I'm, now that I got you know your contact information, I'm definitely gonna you know hit you up so we can you know talk offline about other things for sure. 
So everybody, for the invite. and everybody, don't forget, hit his fucking ex down. All right, I have all his shit plugged in in my goddamn information. So follow his ass, get and hit him up for a fucking shirt. And if you don't, we don't, you don't give a fuck if you're white, black, or fucking yellow or purple. You fucking get that shirt and you fucking wear it with pride. Until then, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gibson. And I will talk to you and everybody else soon. Have a blessed night. (laughs) So cute.